how you guys doing? And welcome back to True as a Cold Steel with me, your girl, No Fuses. Uh, we got done beating up some mutated crocodiles and stopping Phantom Thief B last episode, so this time we have to go to Rin's sister's school and hopefully we'll see her again after that whole debacle with the fight and the ruin and almost dying, you know. So, uh, with that being said, let's get into it. And if you guys like this video or this series, then please do not hesitate to like, <laughs> like, or subscribe to the channel for more. Um, let's see, let's see. we gotta go to the school. Okay. Um, go to another district, yes. Ah, uh, okay, so we physically, we physically have to do this. We have to get around the tram and go through all that BS with the animation. Oh, I passed it. There it goes. There, now it's an option. So we just can't let him teleport, can ya? I don't we'll have time to do anything else when we arrive at that same district. Should we get going? Oh, it's the same district. Because I highly doubt there's going to be another main boss there. I'm pretty sure we'll have time to, like, restock and all that good stuff. Because I'm broke anyway. I'm broke in this game. Why in all the RPGs I play, I'm always broke. I don't never have any money. Online, so cute. Are they about to greet us? Okay, never mind. <laughs> They're just like, who are they? They were wearing the same uniform as Reen's sister. Yeah, they must go to Saint Australia too. So the famous Saint Australia Girls School is around here, huh? It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school exclusively for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although, I can at least support the school's commitment to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girl's school. Maybe because of his sister. Maybe. D no, no I don't. This is all just common knowledge. Anyway, let's go and wait for the <laughs> He's like, gate. He's like, moving on. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Why would you? He's probably surrounded by beautiful high society ladies. Of course he would be nervous. <laughs> to men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. <laughs> My god. <laughs> I don't know what he's expecting, but then you just see him lounging on couches or something. I was wondering... Did you not want to come here, Laura? My father did recommend it to me, but they offered no classes in the martial arts. Ah, so this is a lady school where things like martial arts aren't taught. It's like you'll be the perfect lady. Martial arts is not in our criteria of things to teach you. That's why she rejected it. So she's like, nah, it's too girly for me. It's basically what she's saying. That alone was reason enough to look elsewhere. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies. Yeah, I can picture the chaos now. Oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? 
You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still... <laughs> He's like, you should at least know common knowledge like who the rural members are. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Elfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Eugent. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. Oh, right. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Eusis' brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Elfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince, then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but that's how nobles do things. Yeah, that's really how they do things. They don't care who's the oldest. If they ain't pure-blooded, they don't care. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the borough aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Ah, uh, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel, after the crisis in the borough was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And, yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Oh, you're all here already! Is that Sarah? Okay, uh, it's not. I'm just me? like, it can't be. That's some strain for Sarah's voice. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? I mean, we went through a lot. So, we might as well just get this over with. Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end too? <laughs> as if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. <sighs> Every time. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> Well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. Wait. Yeah, they're like, wait a minute. They're talking normally Did now. You two. <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. <coughs> of course. I um I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sleepover at girls' good. night. <laughs> the thought of a class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. That's girls for you. <laughs> girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? That must be Heimdall Cathedral's bell. I will not be surprised if we meet the it princess. It has a solemn, stately sound, wouldn't you say? It sounds so different from how it does in the Oz district. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock. Which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. Rain? Oh, is that sister? Elise, what are you doing here? Wait. Well, you go. She goes to school here. School, so, where else would you be? Exactly. Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you too. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp. Well, there are nine of us in class seven. Wait, what? Then that would mean you're the one we were told wanted us to come here? 
actually. I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? I swear. She could have at least given me a little warning that you were coming. Um, Elise? Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. Everyone's just staring at us. <laughs> eee! Boys! I don't think I've seen that year before. That year for Thor's Military Academy. My brother studied there when he was younger. Oh, is that the Military Academy Emperor Draco's found? I heard they all allow Carmen's to roll here, too. Yeah, it's going by so fast. Oh my, isn't that Lady Laura? She always looks so gallant. Oh, do you think she's transferring here? Isn't that fun, boy, Eusis? God dang, it's going by so fast. Do you think this boy's a foreigner? He's so tall. Oh, the red is so cute. The silver haired girl looks like she needs a hug. <laughs> the blonde girl seems to be caught here. What family did she come from? That girl with glasses has such a missing figure. You're just gossiping as we walk by. I can feel their stares pouring into my head. Hmm, pay them no mind. <laughs> we certainly do seem to be the stars of the show today. <laughs> and Laura's as popular as ever. I can't say that being admired doesn't feel nice, but please don't be too hard on them. We don't have many opportunities to meet people from outside the school. Do that boy in front is a commoner? I'm not sure, but either way, he looks so handsome. How do you think they know Elise? Actually, you're right. This is kind of uncomfortable. Are they all the same age as you, Elise? I don't know, and I don't care. Yeah, she doesn't like all these girls eyeing her brother. What's in here? It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Who did call us here anyway? Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Thank you. Please show them in. Oh. I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! We're gonna meet the princess! No way! Hey, Elise, is that... <sighs> you don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me... Princess Alfin. Ah, you're adorable. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. My name is Alfin. Alfin Rice Arner. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Likewise, Your Highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. Aw, thank you! I was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in Santa Astraya too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. 
I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. <sighs> First I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. Y your Highness. <laughs> Got you to look. But I... Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> me too. This was the letter. Please don't worry about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Exactly, I mean, that's the best wonderful friend that anyone's ever gonna need. Yeah, I'm friends with a princess. No pun intended. An actual princess. That's the only friend I ever need. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Green Schwarzer. I'm suspicious. I really think the princess is about to ask Rain to be her partner for the festival. If that happens, I'm going to laugh because she knows that Elise is not going to like that idea whatsoever. But let's see if I'm right. Elise has told me so much about you. Your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. Rain? Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? Wh what? Y your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. And now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. I... I couldn't possibly. I mean... That's enough, your highness. Aw, oh, don't be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. Anyway, that aside, the reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Who is this? Hey, isn't that... A guitar? No, a lute? It sounded like a guitar. <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived. Oh. Huh. Well, I apologize for keeping you waiting. Oh, it's the other one. It's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> and you as well, young lady. Well, I trust everyone here has been making themselves comfortable. Who's this guy? I'm not sure. Though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh my god. Uh, they're gonna be like two put two two together, but like, wait a minute. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girl's school. But whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. What is wrong with this man? Could he be? <clears throat> Ow! I think that's quite enough. Any more of that and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Yeah, he's big, so oh, weird. I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear sister. Wait, 
So this is... Wow. Indeed. Prince Alvert. Tis I, Olivert Rice Arne, also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the debaucherous prince. What the world? I also serve as Thor's military academy's ornamental chairman of the board. It's a pleasure to find Of course you are. Ladies and gentlemen of class 7. Of course you're uh, one of the board members. And that's a prize at this point. Let's just make everyone a freaking board member. Bring all the chairs. So are you ever going to reveal what he wanted from us? Okay, he's gonna do it now. We had to have dinner first. We couldn't just say it. to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the chairman of the board of directors, your highness. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the imperial family, but still. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah, I would probably think it would be the chancellor, but I guess not. I expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's. I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. That's surprisingly forthright coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I will. You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At oh, first, I, see. I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units, too. Hmm. I think I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind Class 7, and why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies. To show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies. Is it not, Your Highness? That is one of the reasons, yeah. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts. Not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. <laughs> You're so surprised. A little unsure whether we can live up to such high expectations. Hey, you guys done so much Hearing already. Your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Class seven does seem like an ideal environment to expand one's outlook on life. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Again, makes sense. That they probably were like, alright, we accept the idea, but we're gonna do it our way. So that, um, you know, that, that makes sense. I can, you can't be mad at that. Even so. I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. He looks so serious, like he's about to tell me bad news. And that was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. He 
<laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. <laughs> Your Highness! <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Karl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, they do seem to have certain expectations for us. Yeah, each one has like their own expectation. Every time we meet, they're just like, hmm. It looks like they're like judging us with their eyes, like, hmm. I, I've come to meet you, but I've also come to fill you out. I've only seen your pictures and profiles, but I've never got up close and personal. Each one has been that way. <laughs> Precisely. As I mentioned, I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. Yeah, even to her own daughter, they're a freaking mystery. Nobody knows what she's up to. It's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. There probably is, like every single time. They're like, hmm, where should we send them this one? Let's take them this where? Oh, no, 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 that's not a good place. Let's take them this place. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Too late. I already feel the pressure. The whole class is feeling the pressure now. They're all looking at him like, there's something you're not telling us. What is it? <laughs> Your students, first and foremost. Reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. Fall in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> What's with this pep talk? You know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thoris who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thor's myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I see. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. So, because he, he knew the purpose behind everything, so you just go like, do whatever you want. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? <laughs> They're like an excellent team. They're like, you're not talking about Sarah, right? Sarah? Sarah, tall, curvy, purple hair, always making jokes, making our lives a living hell. Is that, that one? So you sure? That that one excellent team person? <laughs> Are you referring to instructor Sarah? Uh, yep. <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still. Coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Watch, well, I'm gonna click X and everyone's gonna look shocked. Wait, what? Exactly. Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Wait, Purple Lightning? I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right, though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, 
and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. <laughs> they were both like, Purple Lightning? The Purple Lightning? Yes, her. The strong, one of the strongest, one of the top 10 strongest people in our country is now your homeroom teacher. Oh, so there's no voices here? You're just gonna make me say everything? Okay. Thanks for seeing us out. I never would have guessed you were friends with Princess Alfin of all people. Hmm. I wish I knew how much of a, what she said was genuine. Uh, Lise? He's like, what is going on? Thank you for taking the time to come here today. Take care of your way back to your lodgings. We will, thank you. Thanks for showing us around. Hee <laughs> hee, good night. Good night, everyone. What? He's like, why is she mad at me? Don't worry. <laughs> I can kind of understand where she's coming from. <laughs> I doubt anyone could have guessed that Her Highness would extend such a bold invitation to you. I I'm not sure how that's my fault. Oh, and they're flashback, okay. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Rain, I have a small favor I'd like to ask you. This must be the reason why Elise is mad at him. Of me? Y your Highness? Oh, you're going to ask him? Mm -hmm. But of course. You see, tomorrow I'll be attending the garden party sponsored by the local government for the start of the festival. Or rather, Makis' father invited me to attend. Yes, I seem to recall hearing that myself. That's one of the crystal garden in the Manor Park, right? Indeed, anyway, let's not watch wrong the matter. I was rather hoping that you would join me as my dance partner, Reem. He's like, uh. Yeah, she's pissed. Does that mean? Do, do you think Her Highness knows that the old saying, a dance today, a wedding tomorrow? I'm sure that's fooling in the realm of tabloid speculation. Still, there's no denying that many will interpret that way. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on a minute. I, I don't think I can. I mean, it would be an honor, but it's not. But it's like too grave not for someone like me. Hee <laughs> hee, oh, not at all. Your father may be a baron, but the Schwarzes have long had deep ties with the imperial family. I'll pause if this comes across as rude, but inviting you would likely create less opposition than if I were to invite Eusis. I see, well, I can't deny that. You need to apologize. I find your choice rather fascinating, actually. Eusis, you're not helping. Anyway, I don't think I'm the man you want. Sometimes I can barely keep from tripping on my own feet. Is that so? Elise told me that she asked you to help her practice the finer points of ballroom dancing. In fact, she says you're an excellent dancer. That you step lightly very gracefully. Isn't that true, Reen? I will. I understand. It was for me to trouble you with a petition like this on such short notice. And besides, I don't suppose you would have much interest in dancing with a little girl like me. No, no, no. That's not what I mean, Your Highness. I can't whistle. That's my sister, all right. She really knows how to twist the knife. Here, your highness, please. You too, Prince Alfred. Looks like they're having fun. I had no idea the Imperial family was such a lively, cheerful bunch. I get the feeling they are all like this. Ah, I see now. How could it not have crossed my mind? Perhaps the truth is that you already have your heart set on someone else? Or is there someone you've already courting? <laughs> Even Elise is like... You better say no. <laughs> she's she's low key interested at the answer right now. She like this is one of those this is one of those uh, questions that no man should answer, especially if he doesn't know that he has love interest. Like he's completely dense to it. It's like don't answer. There it there is no right answer to this question. 
there's literally no right answer. The only right answer is to shut your mouth and pretend you didn't hear the question. Just, just do you know, walk away, eat some food. Just don't answer the question. Read. Don't answer the question. <laughs> Look, even Laura's looking at. She's like, do you? Uh, well, do you? I'm possibly dying to know which maiden has conquered the battlefield of your heart. Wait, I don't, I mean... Yikes, how am I going to get out of this one? I'm not sure how to turn her down gently. Um, you say you're you're not feeling because of the food? You stand up, you'll walk out the room. It is the only right answer. Do not answer. <laughs> Very well, I shall relent this time. Okay, she gave you a freebie. She gave you a pass. Ah. However, next year I'll be 16 just like your sister. That's when I'll be making my debut into high society, so I'd be very happy if you give my invitation some thought. But even she's pissed. Well, aren't you the lucky one? Her Highness really seems to have taken a liking to you. You really ought to have accepted her invitation. It might have led to something truly unexpected in the future. Nah, I doubt it. It seems like she just took an interest in me because I'm her friend's brother. She didn't seem all that serious about it, so I figured she was just trying to tease the two of us. Can't deny it, it seemed that way. But, I got the impression that wasn't all that was going on there. You weren't the only one feeling nervous that whole time. Prince Aura was even more unusual person than I heard. Uh, no doubt about it. He seems entertaining to be around. Do you think that he's the one who made Class 7 possible? He seems he's going, but hearing him talk about our class made what we're doing feel even more important. Besides, he gave us plenty of other useful info. Yeah, including the fact that board directors seem to have their own agenda for us. I have no idea what they're planning, but their moves seem incredibly suspicious. Yeah. Agreed. Hearing about the instructor's background kind of threw for a loop, too. I wouldn't imagine that she used to be a bracer, maybe because you don't really see them around anymore to begin with. A rank is more or less the highest you can be, too. I assume you already knew about her history fee. Yup, the guild is every Jaeger Corp's main competition after all. Probably even ran into her a few times during her operations. R really? Unbelievable. <laughs> I almost forgot about those good old days. Instructor! How long have you been there? It looks like you finally found out about my work history, huh? I guess that kind of tarnishes my ravishing adult charm a bit then. I hate to break it to you, but you didn't have any to begin with. Shh! Did you hear an old maid sighing? What was that? Oh, she's here too! Hehe. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Captain Claire? This is quite an unusual combination. Let me be the first to assure you that this wasn't my idea, but governors asked me to tell you that tomorrow's field study is being put on hold. Instead, you get the exciting opportunity to help this lady and her goons with their evil schemes. Huh? What evil schemes? <sighs> Sarah, could you maybe not try to put them off materially before I even had a chance to explain? Actually, there's a matter I'd like all of you to help us with. I've discussed this with the governor and decided that this would be the best way to handle the issue. What, what is this? Is this a military vehicle? What is happening? Now, if you'd be so kind as to get on board, I'll explain everything to you to the command post in the Heimdall Central Station. What is happening? I'm afraid we have no choice but to find them as such. Unfortunately, we have no clue as to their aim, nor do we know the names of the group's members, its size, or its history. At present, it doesn't even seem that the terrorist groups have established a name for themselves. That that's a lot of unknowns. Would I be correct in assuming that the man we met in the North Highlands was the one trying to start a war is a member? Ah. Mr. Flute Guy. 
so he's one of them, hmm? He said his name was Gaiden or G or something like that. So that's what the man you encountered in the Highlands was up to. He does sound like the terrorist type. And you think he and his group are trying to try something tomorrow on the first day of the Summer Festival? We're currently operating under that assumption, yes. The Summer Festival lasts three days, but unlike festivals and other promises, only the first day garners much attention. It's been a month since the incident in Nord. If they intend to make their move soon, tomorrow is likely the time. I'd have to agree. Terrorists do love their time in the spotlight after all, and considering how easily Gaiden gave you his name, I'm betting we'll start seeing him acting more openly soon. First you gather arms and other like-minded allies in secret, then you reveal yourself with a bang and keep going in quick succession. That's the typical terrorist MO. I see. And you want specific foot countermeasures against them? Right, the RMP will be joining forces with the Heimdall military police to bolster the capital's security. Unfortunately, as big as the capital is, I can't say with complete confidence that there'll be no holes in our security. That's where you come in. You'll be assisting our security measures as a reserve force. Bah! I'm sure it'd be nice if the guild was still active here. They would have come in mighty handy right about now. Yes, I don't disagree. Um, Sarah, you do know that the RMP had no involvement in the guild's withdrawal from the capital, right? Oh, really? I mean, your boss and that brother of yours could hardly make their opposite to the guild more obvious if they tried. But, well, wow, these two really seem to have a messy issue between them. It sure looks that way, especially where the guild is concerned. Although it sounds like your brother has been keeping busy in Crossbow recently. Are we gonna meet the brother soon? And she's like, how do you know that? So what's it gonna be? Whether you choose this as your field study test tomorrow is totally up to you. If you decline, there are plenty of tasks the government needs to take care of, like you've been doing the last two days. Star Festival is a busy time, after all. Lots of little details that need to be squared away. Of course we're gonna accept. Of course. Why not? We would feel like shit if we didn't. I think I speak for Group A when I say that we'll be glad to join in with the anti-terrorist countermeasures. Group B feels the same. Alright then. Thank you for your assistance, everyone. Now let's move right along to confirm the patrol routes you'll be following. Kitty! I'm sorry. I did, all I saw was the cat, and I had to say it. Oh, we're back here. Are we finally gonna get to sleep? We met our prince, a princess, got invited to the dance tomorrow, and now we on a super secret mission for terrorists. Like, can I go to sleep now? Wow, this place sure brings back memories. Up until about a year and a half ago, I was swimming by here at least once a week. Really? I wouldn't be surprised if I'd seen you around before then. Well, I did end up getting to know your sister. Fiona, right? Works as a piano teacher? Seriously? Wait, she said she knew someone who worked at the guild. I guess she was talking about the instructor. Still, instructor, what is it that caused the guild to withdraw from the capital? I've been boring that for a while now myself. The guild used to be pretty active in Arizona, right? Well, yeah, it's a direct cause with the guild branches all over the country being blown up. I'm sure you already know that. The coppers were a Jaeger corpse hired by the nasty bunch the guild was at odds with at the time. Well, still is, but anyway. Thanks to the dependable ally, we were able to defeat the Jaegers, but by then, the Imperial government had its eye on us. They started making life difficult for us, took away most of the guild's authority in the country, leaving our hands tied. Eventually, the branches here started to closing, one by one, with no real prospect of ever reopening. So that's how it was. Hmm, instructor. Mm hmm don't worry, your dad might, might be the city's governor, but he wasn't really involved. A certain friend of his, her, was very involved. You're talking about... Chance again, Osborne, resident of the Imperial government, I assume. Hmm. Him and his cronies in the Imperial Tunch Division. It's kind of like a sister organization to the railway military police. Anyway, after that, I was out of the job. That's when Pistol Van, uh, Van Dyke came and offered me... A position at the academy. I started as a comment writer last spring, and after that, I wound up being chosen as class's homeroom teacher. I still help out the guild from time to time, though. That's how I ended up bringing in our Jaeger princess here. Knock it off. 
So that's what happened. You mentioned that a Jaeger crystal was responsible for your tags. What was its name? Oh, it wasn't the same group Fee used to run with. They were called Jester, not a particularly high-ranking outfit. I see. Worried about me? Well, I suspect it was likely a different corpse. Uh -huh. From the sound of it, the Jaeger crystal Fee belonged to was a pretty large one, though. Oh, definitely. She was with Z Zephyr. Their leader was this insidious guy known as Jaeger King. You name a combat special leader, they had it covered. They were the only corpse on par with the Red Constellation, which has its roots in the Berserkers of the Middle Ages. They caused me plenty of trouble back when I was still a full-time bracer. Look who's talking, you caused us plenty of trouble yourself. It's hard to believe that this all happened to people we actually know. Uh, yeah, uh, it sounds more like a story I have with some novel. Anyway, the terrorists you've been hearing about lately aren't part of any Jaeger Corps. I figured that was the case. Generally, Jaegers are interested in just two things, money and fighting. The guy and guy you encountered in the Orion's didn't seem to fit that description though. If I had to guess, I'd say he's acting on some kind of deep state grudge. A grudge, huh? Ooh, well, it's hard to say anything for sure. I never met him myself. From what I understand, he did seem particularly tenacious. He was definitely that. Which means we're really going to have to step it up for our patrol tomorrow. Your involvement is just a precautionary step, but if you're going to help, give it your best, I say. It seems like your teamwork is smoother than ever, too, so all the better. Anyway, it's late, so get your report written and get some sleep. I'm gonna crash in one of those empty rooms upstairs. Ah. The instructor never changed, did she? You sure? She seemed more talkative than usual. Feels like she's pushing herself. Now that you mention it, she seems to be far more forthcoming with information than usual. Maybe she feels a bit weird being back in her old workplace? You might be right. Still, I guess we're not really in any position to be worrying about her. We'll just have to do our best to coordinate with Group B tomorrow to make sure everything goes smoothly. Agreed. Why couldn't we all stay in the same place? I mean, we're all going... To the same destination tomorrow. Why can't we all just live in one area? Drinks are on me someday. <laughs> someday. Dang, there's more. Whew. Okay, what's happening now? This can't be us because we're going to sleep in our nice guild hotel. Yep. Is this is this G? I'm just going off the outfit. Is it G? <laughs> the time is finally at hand. Yeah, that's G. At last. The hammer of judgment shall rouse this indolent capital from its slumber. Yeah! What? You just got neighborhood Joes working for you? Comrade G, all the necessary preparations are complete. But it feels like you have so few men accompanying you. Wouldn't it be wise to call in a few others for backup? There's nothing to fear. As long as I have this flute, not even the railway military police stand a chance of stopping us. Did you have that green stuff at your flute last time? I feel like you've upgraded. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't looking at it hard enough last time I saw you, but I'm pretty sure your flute did not look like that. Tomorrow, the people of this land will at last know our name. My dear comrades, I shall be counting on you all. Yeah! Oh my god, is there more? Day of the Summer Festival, where you should be dancing with the princess. Alright, I'm going to check on Group B before heading over to the Railroad Military Police Command Post. 
Just give me a call on your arc if you find anything during patrols. Okay. We'll do, Instructor. Leave it to us. Still, I was expecting Captain Claire to be our point of contact. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to agree to grab with the Railway Military Police. I'm not, expecting, I'm not exactly delighted about working with them. Things are looking pretty serious. I'm helping them this once and at the end your point of contact. But I won't let them forget for a minute that they owe me. Anyway, I'll see you all later. Tell another thing for the breakfast. Sure thing. Alright, we should get moving too. We've got our destiny area, so we'll be patrolling them one by one. Keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Instructor Sarah said she'll count us, us around new too. Let's be off then. Ja. I'm guessing the city's gonna be packed with people since it's the first of the term, but yep, that makes things a lot harder for us. That's all the more reason we need to stay, especially vigilant. I don't know if I should end this episode right here. Because I've been playing, or watching really, for quite a minute. Hmm. Hmm. What do you guys think? Should I continue on? Or should I just can, uh, make this my nice little... My nice little movie episode, because that's basically what this turned into, just cutscene after cutscene after cutscene after cutscene, like, good god, it's not gonna end! Um... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end it right here, guys. Uh, I know you guys are enjoying the longer episodes, but I'm even I'm reaching my limit with this. So, hope you guys enjoyed the movie! because that's what this was. This was a game movie. Um, and I know I wasn't talking that much throughout it because I wanted to be silent so you guys can hear what was going on. But in the next episode, I guess we'll be taking around some terrorists and G and all the other dudes trying to hide during this mm. summer festival. And so yeah, look forward to that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you later.